Hey, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, we're in the basement. What does that mean? It means we get to talk about basement stuff. I'm Aaron Jones from Big Dog Construction, and the last time we were in a mechanical room together, we had some pipes and stuff going on. It just sounds we... weird. Well, it's quite time. normal for us. Though. Yeah, I guess it is. It's just two guys geeking I, over, I geeking you. out over mechanicals. I hear you. <laughs> we, you didn't have one of these installed the last time we were. No, so we have our Zender unit in, and this house here, you know, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the layout and, and kind of the, the spatial considerations for installing a Zender. I've done a bunch of videos on how they work, ERVs, all of that, but I've never really spoken to the spatial requirements because this isn't something that just neatly tucks in the corner, right? You need some space for it, but there's other requirements too. So we're using the Zender. It's their Comfo Air Q. This is one of two ERVs in this house. We could have gotten away with one larger size, but then that means the distribution network has to expand, you know, almost twofold, which in this case here, this makes it nice and neat and um somewhat compact, even though the most compact system still has some spatial requirements to it. But you can see here, we have a good size box. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever installed a Zender yet? We haven't done a Zender, but I understand what an ERV is. We use them quite often. Yeah. HRV, ERV, um, my preference is ERV, yeah. but I'm just happy if you're using something. Something, some <laughs> kind of ventilation. Like that's the first requirement. And then if you can, do an ERV. And then if you can, Zender, just makes an yeah. exceptional system, right? There's a lot they're of things very I quiet. Appreciate. You don't even hear that they're on, but you know, so the first requirement, obviously we're in a box here, you know, you need about a three foot by four foot wall space to mount this thing on the wall. It needs to be mounted pretty high off the floor because we have a drain, condensate drain that comes from below. So right there, you're probably talking about three foot by at least about five or six feet of space to get the unit. And then you can see we have additional piping that all connects to the top of these, which probably adds another two feet. So you're at three foot by seven, eight foot space for just planning to put the unit on the wall and bolt it. So <clears throat> four pipe system, right? We have a pipe that goes to the outside that is a supply. We have a pipe that goes to the outside that is exhaust. We have a pipe that goes to the inside to supply, and then we have a pipe from the inside, when I say inside, I mean inside the condition space, that returns the air to the unit. Now, when that air comes in from the outside and in from the inside, that air exchanges across <clears throat> the interior of the Zender. And the beauty of the ERV is that we're able to recover the moisture and the temperature yeah right? you're recovering heat and you're recovering moisture you're, there's a couple different ways to look at it but the magic really happens but the beautiful part is you're taking that fresh outside air and as it's coming through the unit it's being warmed up without mixing with the inside stale air that you're exhausting right. so you're You've bought and paid for either cool air or hot air, depending on whether it's heating season or cooling system. But the idea is that energy doesn't get thrown out with the bath water, right? So now, next math on it. We have a pipe, like I said, that comes in and a pipe that goes out to the outside. These are comfort tubes, so they're a, basically an insulation pipe. The pipe is actually made out of insulation here. Um, but the requirement there is a minimum of a 10 foot displacement. We here have actually put one on one side of the entry and one on the other side. We're probably at probably close to a 30 foot displacement. But you don't ever want to run these out so that you get re-entrainment, right? You never want to exhaust where the intake is because then that's kind of like you're exhaling and inhaling in the same space and you don't want that to happen. Right, so we have those four pipes. Now, these two pipes that go to the inside and come from the inside, tell us a little bit about those, Aaron. So I call these 
a manifold distribution. I know Zender has a specific name for them. Yeah. I believe they call it what is it D box? I call them D boxes, okay. which is distribution yeah. box. Yeah. So I call it a manifold. Right, wrong, or indifferent. I understand what it's doing. In this case, we have fresh air entering into this box, and we're distributing it evenly to all of these pipes. And I like what they've done here. These are all numbered and labeled so that you know where the fresh air is going. Now, quite often what you see in, uh, I hate to say run of the mill, but I'm gonna say your average HRV or ERV install is you see this one pipe and the trunk will go down and you'll have a bunch of branch pipes coming off of it to the various rooms throughout the house. Very hard to balance very hard to ensure that you have airflow distributed evenly to every room. This is an amazing system. You know that if you have, we'll just say 60 CFM in here, every one of these pipes is going to get 60 CFM. It doesn't exactly work that way, but hopefully you understand what I'm getting at. Yeah, they get broken down. So these D boxes are always eight um, on the outside. They have this three inch you know, very flexible hose that can do a pretty tight radius. But the beauty of that is that can get run through a two by four wall, right? So for our wall mounted registers, these basically you core the hole, run these up. So you're not trying to figure out how to distribute air through these larger pipes. They break it down. And the beauty of this also is these can snake through the house. And because they're running at such a low pressure, I mean, some of these are probably distributing maybe about 15 to you know, 20 CFM. So that takes us all through the house. That snakes it through. But again, you can see over there, we were talking about three foot by eight foot. Those pipes come along, and then we have the couple D boxes here where you know, these are taking up a considerable amount of space. So, you know, if you're planning on putting one of these zenders in your house, it's not something you're putting in the back of, say, a three by three closet, because there's a lot of things that come with this. So you have to plan appropriately and make sure that, you know, again, that these things work out well. Another point here. Um, I've heard from a lot of people in the past, oh, I don't want to use flexible ducting because it's noisy. This room is quiet. Yeah. This is a quiet room. And you can walk anywhere in this house and stand under any one of these fresh air supplies or exhaust returns, and it's quiet. Yeah. Flexible ducting is not noisy. Units are noisy. Ducting can be noisy, but usually it's related to the airflow and the noise that the unit is already emitting. That zender is very quiet. Anyways, there you have it. A little background. If you're planning on using the Zender and you're putting it in your house, now you have some kind of information where you can plan for, you know, having done literally a whole bunch of these, you know, finding the space is a challenge, but always remember about that 10-foot displacement. That really does become a challenge, and you want to solve for that very early. That's not something, ah, when we're under construction, we'll just figure it out because it becomes much more of a challenge the longer I wait to do that. And I can imagine you as a builder, you like to have things planned out before you build. 100%. It has to be planned out ahead of time. One of the first things we plan when we're working through a design of any new construction is where is everything going to fit. Now, you don't always need quite as much space as you have here but you always need more than you think. And it's always good to have room for future growth if you add a system. And I, I really appreciate what you've done here, Steve. Yes. It's well, well done. Well thought out ahead of time. There you go. Well, there you have it, folks. We got the final word from Aaron Jones, Big Dog Construction. Came all the way down here from Canada just to be on video. So if you're following along, Thank you very much. If you're not, smash that subscribe button. Give me a follow on Instagram. Give Aaron a follow at Big Dog Construction on Instagram. Until next time, long live our buildings.